Stand for the pledge. To the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, this time we'll do the OOK, AOK awards. I'll do, I'll take care of Mr. Carpentier's and then I'll hand it off to Mr. Conklin. Mr. Carpentier and Mr. Krebs couldn't be here tonight. <clears throat> so the first one I have is actually for Mr. Anderson. He did a huge favor. Um, we have a special folder that kind of goes between my office and the um, central treasurer, which is in charge of all the teacher stuff and the after school clubs and everything else. That missing folder, and it's very distinct, it's a leopard print folder, went missing. Mr. Anderson took, found it, returned it, and it, we were so thankful because it had like important stuff in there. So I do want to give you an AOK -OK award, Mr. Scott Anderson. Thank you for finding the leopard folder. <laughs> yeah, welcome. Thank you. Okay, and then I have, let's see, do we have Alexandra? Carney? No. All right. Annabelle Riley? Okay. So, Miss Annabelle Riley, this was written up by Miss Bizjack. And she said, another student needed a seat in the cafe, and Annabelle took it upon herself to organize the table so everyone had a seat and everybody was happy. So, we appreciate your kindness. Thank you, Miss. Annabelle, and there you go. And I'm gonna take that sticky off. All right, and then I have, let's see, I have got Logan. So Logan, this was written up by Miss McCavich. She said, Logan was distracted by another student. He asked if he could move his seat in order to have hear the lesson better. So she was so happy about being responsible and the fact that you thought about it. So we really appreciate that because it's important. So thank you, Mr. Logan. And then I'll take this off and we'll give this to you because it's got free ice cream in there. <laughs> All right. So I have... I've got Keith Blount, I don't think they're here. I've got Gerald King, not here. And I got Alexandra, still not here. Okay, so now I'm gonna hand it over Mr. Conklin. to Mr. Conklin. Thank you very much. We'll go around and grab these. I think I only have one person here, right? I'll read the other names real quick that got AOK -OK awards but are not here tonight. Uh, Brian Lilly, Ksenia Sanowski, John Morbido, and Trey Quick from the Junior Senior High School. But this gentleman right here, Mr. Evan Zagronik, come on up. Evan has two AOK -OK awards, okay? So you are, yeah, yeah, there you go. Nice job. I'm going to read these real quick, all right? Yeah, so first one. This is from uh, Miss Ross, okay? A new student came into French 8, and although Evan was not going in that direction, the student was going. Evan volunteered to help the new student find his way to his next class. Very nice job, that's Thank what you. I like to see. Awesome, Thanks. I'll take that posted off in a second. The next one, man, celebrity up here. This is also from Miss Ross. You like French? No. <laughs> A new student, what, this, same thing. It says the same thing. So, you know what? You're going to get too still. There you go. <laughs> so, I will say something. Evan's a great kid. All right? All right. Give it up for him. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Hey, great kid. Good job. <laughs> he gets two ice cream. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. At this time, like I always do, if you'd like to stay and be bored and listen to us for the rest of the night, or you will not insult us and you want to go home and enjoy whatever you want to do. So it's up to you, but thanks for, thanks for coming. <laughs> you got it, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Um, oh, yes. Oh. He noticed that 
that another child was upset, he came over to that child, made sure he was okay and felt better. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Good night. Okay. Superintendent's report. Okay, so we just returned from 2023 NISBA in Buffalo, which was great. It was extremely informative. Um, the 2024 NISBA will be in New York City, and that's actually going to be scheduled October 20th through the 22nd. Now, this year we did adopt a new code of conduct, so I kind of wanted, you know, I'm going to start keeping track of discipline. And because we included in that code of conduct some tiered interventions and more of a social emotional learning framework. So we have seen a 4% decrease from the number of discipline referrals when looking at the same months from 2021 and 22 and 22 and 23. Um, there have, you know, there are more referrals in September than October. We have seen a decrease in categories such as inappropriate language, gestures, confrontation and bullying. We have seen an increase in drug and alcohol infractions. And this trend we have heard about, especially like vaping across the state. Um, we are looking at, I do believe in December, we are going to have a um, vaping program at the junior, senior high school. And that's where it's basically, we're going to have a bedroom set up and parents can come and actually look into the bedroom and see all the places that a teenager can hide stuff. Um, also, you know, because of the increase in alcohol and drugs that we are seeing, Sullivan County BOCES is actually starting a restart program, which is very similar to the same program as a drug and alcohol treatment program that OU BOCES has to treat school age children. Um, just to keep on our radar, um, the Diwali, um, which is the Lunar New Year has been added to the state calendar. We do not have to observe that this year, but we will have to observe that next year. Diwali, which is the Indian Light Festival, that has not been added at this time, but we will still have to keep that in mind when we're looking at next year's calendar. They have increased the number of hours for tutoring, and this is for suspended students, homebound in, um, instruction, and students that cannot come to school. So they've actually increased it from two hours a day for junior, senior high schools to three hours a day, five days a week. That's a total of 15 hours. And for elementary students, they have increased it from um, 10 hours to, I mean, from five hours to 10 hours per week. Now this is coming from the latest court determination. So if we get more information, but that's what right now the appellate court is saying. Um, a, just to make sure that we're on the same page, since 2021-2022, uh, our BOCES aid has dropped from 55% to 44%. We are considered to be land wealthy, so they keep dropping our aid. Our transportation aid has dropped 3%. Um, since 2022 school year, and that is from 44% to 41%. Um, we might see an increase in our transportation aid this year because our bus lease was not included last year. But I also don't want to count anything until I see it in my bank. Um, but just to make sure you're aware of that. We also have been talking about Ed Law 912, which is a health and wellness <laughs> services. This requires us to offer equitable services to the students at Homestead. And these services include occupational therapy, physical therapy, um, speech, counseling, and nursing. There are 110 students that are out of district that attend Homestead. So we can charge the home districts for providing these services. So we're looking at, and Caleb and I are talking about it, we're looking at either charging per student $1,000 to $1,100. So that might increase that as a new revenue stream because we do have to offer these things to all students. So it is, um, we're going to be talking about that. And then as of December 1st, we will be able to bill Medicaid for those families that receive Medicaid for certain related services. So they, if they receive Medicaid and they need PT, OT, and speech, we can then bill Medicaid for those services. Medicaid is also allowing us to bill back 15 months, so we can even go back last year. Um, you know, the, there is an opportunity to bill for counseling if it is done by a social worker. Um, school, school psychologists cannot do the counseling, but if we had a social worker, they could, um, which might be a conversation to come up about looking at possibly like a part-time social worker, if it can be paid for by another revenue stream. 
Um, and if a student has nursing on their IEP, we can also bill Medicaid for that. So we're trying to figure out, you know, look at all the different revenue streams that we can get. So, and that concludes my report. Thank you. Any questions for Ms. Ferreira? No. For the board? No. All good. Moving on. Elementary principal report. Okay, Mr. Carpentier is it here tonight, so you do have his report in front of you. The biggest takeaways is that we have increased our attendance, um, so we are seeing an increase in students coming to school, which is a good thing. Um, Leader and me is still rocking and rolling. I actually had one of our teachers um, come to me directly and say that she loves the program and she sees growth and she actually utilizes it the entire day. And she, um, you know, I'm seeing a lot of teachers respond really well to that program. Um, we're continue to work on our MTSS, which is our tier one, two, and three services. Um, we did literacy training at the last conference day. Um, report cards are getting ready to go out now. Parent-teacher conferences are on the 21st for both buildings, so that's happening. Um, you know, observations have started. He's got 19 fall clubs running right now with 83% of kids participating. So these clubs are very important. They did have elections. Um, and then I just saw today that like Readathon, we've got over 100 kids registered. They've read over 30,000 minutes. And then I think another kid, I got an email today about a child winning the, because he read so much, he got a gift card. So reading is happening, literacy is happening. They've got good things happening at the elementary school. So that concludes for the elementary report. Any questions about that? All good? No. Mr. Copper. All right, thank you. So the, uh, the first marking period ended today at the junior senior high school. Uh, teachers are currently inputting grades. Report cards will be published on uh, Monday, November 13th for students and parents to see on the, uh, the portal. Um, my second thing is our seventh graders are finally leaving for their Ashokan trip um, on Monday morning. So they're leaving at 8.15 um, on Monday morning and returning on Wednesday afternoon sometime. I'm happy to report we have 25 students attending the trip. We had our final meeting with the Ashokan staff, um, uh, I think on uh, Monday, I believe it was. And uh, everything is set. They're going to be doing you know, things like blacksmithing, a gorge hike. Um, we had canoeing on there, but we took it off because it's a little chilly out right now. Um, old school house, stuff like that. So it's very exciting. I'd like to thank the uh, chaperones going on that trip, Kelly Pratchler, Ryan Ward, and Denise Farragher. Uh, I myself am going to try to sneak out of here and get up there and uh, visit the seventh graders as well. So very exciting stuff. Um, homecoming week was a success. A big thank you to everyone who helped with the entire week. Um, it's always great seeing the community come together. And we had a ton of fun events planned. It was awesome. Information was sent out regarding parent-teacher conferences on November 21st. Um, the junior senior high school will be again using uh, Pick a Time, uh, the Pick a Time system to schedule meetings uh, with teachers. So that that letter went out, um, I believe, last uh, Friday. I want to say. And then, lastly, I'm, I'm happy to announce that the junior senior high school will be having their first uh, student recognition assembly during school on Friday, November 17th. Um, so the, the the building came together and kind of you know. Instead of recognizing you know, all the kids that get those academic awards, but recognizing kids in each department that might have you know, most improved or best effort or something like that. So um, we're going to operate on a modified schedule that day. And uh, we're going to be in the gym right here with all students and staff. And this idea, like I said, originated from Leader Me, PBAS, and, and the main office. And the main goal is to continue to build on the overall culture and climate of the building. So very exciting for that. That was not my last thing because I got something from Mr. Nivison, uh, you know, late last night. Um, I'm happy to announce, and I'm sorry, uh, Angie, if this is on your report as well, but um, Caitlin McGarry has been selected to the 2023 New York State Section 9 Area All-State Symphonic Band. Sharon placement based on a score of 96 out of 100, which is an A, on her All-State Level 6 flute solo performance at last spring's Nisma Solo Festival. Um, she's only one of three instrumentalists from Sullivan County to accomplish this feat. And to put this into perspective, um, this is with all the big schools as well, um, even some in Rockland County. So uh, very big accomplishment. I believe that's next weekend, correct? I think she's going next weekend. I think it is. So, um, and that's it for me. Thank you, Mr. Conklin. Any questions for the board for me? <laughs> if you don't. Yeah. You are up. Do you have a mic? Give her your She has the mic. She has okay. the mic. Yeah, right. she's good.
Thank you. Any questions? All good? I guess you have a report from Mr. Krebs. So we just, uh, like I had mentioned earlier, November 1st, we had our um, countywide conference day. So we had, and a thank you to Melissa Muller with making sure we had a bus for our teachers, which was greatly appreciated. Heard that back from um, Sullivan West because everybody went there. And so there was a lot of things happening. We had things happening in both buildings. Um, I got a lot of great feedback from the teachers about the different programs and offerings between us and Sullivan West. Um, Mr. Krebs had gone on an MTSS visit down in Ardsley to look at how their program is and you know came back and we're actually ahead of the game with our MTSS which makes me feel good that you know Ardsley is in Westchester and we tend to look at those Westchester schools but we're actually ahead of Ardsley so I was like okay we're on the right track that makes me feel good um, and then we're just going to continue working on some different um, frontline products just to make sure trainings happening and that's like absence management professional growth um, the health for the nursing, just make sure we keep up on our training. And that concludes his report. No questions? No. Mr. Russell, you're up. <laughs> I, can, I can do this uh, in reasonable time, I swear. <laughs> okay. So uh, school taxes and our interest earnings this year, we've already collected 90% of our school taxes. Uh, Dorian Hansen was actually here earlier. She's gonna help me reconcile. We'll have a tax reconciliation for you in January. Uh, unlike last year, we didn't get a nice $30,000 forestry uh, bonus, but uh, we, did, we did do well with our collections. Our interest so far this year, we've collected $53,000 in interest. Last year, we had like $1,200 at this time. Partially, this is because interest rates have exploded. But we also got our money in there quicker this year, and I threw it in as it was coming in. So when she, she would call me, say it was deposited, and I would throw it into our interest account like immediately. Um, on transportation, uh, you've already been told this, the transportation study, he's collected all the data he's put in the report together. Uh, he said mid to late November. So you know we have a little bit of an earlier board meeting, so I didn't have it for this one, but he did still say November is when we're planning to have that. Uh, and facilities, we got fully staffed. Now I would like to, and you'll see it on January, I'd like to retro it if it's okay. Um, I'm gonna post for a point of contact. That's what Troy Green used to do for us. Um, that's one of our facilities guys who's gonna come to our meetings, our um, management meetings, so that they can give us like some kind of background data when we wanna propose projects. You know, cause Troy would know size of septic tanks, where things are, where the wells are. Um, and that's been vacant since Troy left in July. So I, in that position. Uh, I have to post for it, but it's going to be between Adam, Jim. I don't know if Jimmy's going to be interested because he's been here a long time. I wouldn't pass him over if he was interested. Um, but I, I, he has talked about retiring. And so if, he, if he's interested, it's his. But I don't, from what I understand, he said he's probably not. So it'd be between, I would interview Mike Skokas and uh, Adam. It's got, I, I want it to be somebody in maintenance. Mm -hmm. You know, because it's got to be, I've got to be able to ask questions like, you know, boiler questions, things like that. Um, school lunch, we got a $7,000 grant just to buy local food. Um, I've got to start reaching out to local vendors. I know we have the, the greenhouse down here. Um, we're allowed to buy it off bid with the $7,000, so it doesn't have to be through your regular um, mode. And then Jill, this morning, I wanted to add, had sent in, she had found a, an old greenhouse thing, and they're working with the kids in the elementary school to grow their own food there under the greenhouse lamps. Uh, and she was asking, and I have to look and see if I can free up something, if they could get a couple more so they could do one with each class. And I thought that was a neat idea. Um, the auditors were in last week. They wrapped up test work, so I'm just waiting for them to, to kind of put up, uh, you know, and they're asking last minute questions like, here's, you know, what's this on a fixed asset thing or whatever, but they're putting together a report, so I should have that soon. But um, the final numbers right now, I have last, so 21, 22, everything's a year behind in our thing. 21, 22, we spent 19 million, 150. Last year, we spent 19 million, 50, so we spent 100,000 less. Now, here's the bad news. Uh, to the state aid point, the reason she brought that up is we made over 150,000 less last year than we did the year before, and that is all state aid decrease because we have more in tax revenue, more in BOCES revenue, more in interest. It was state aid decreased by like $500,000 that year. Some of that we expect to bounce back. In fact, I've already got the BOCES report. We're gonna have $100,000 more in BOCES aid than we did last year. Um, I don't get that report until November 23rd, so I won't have that for you until January. But I do expect that state aid number to, bag, to bounce back. 
Um, that's all I have for you at the moment. You'll have a lot of information to go over in January. Yeah. 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 Well, they don't release any of the reports, and that's why we don't really have much in December. They don't release the reports till late um, November, early December, for me to give you that anyway. Thank you, Caleb. Any questions? Yes. For that position that you're going to be posting, um, is that an interview process that those applicants have to go through? Or if it's just one applicant, will they still go through an interview process? So I've already interviewed them once, but okay. I do plan to interview them again, yes. Okay. Absolutely. And um, we wanted to get out of the habit of uh, it's just a guaranteed position that they get every year. Yeah. Uh, so it will get reviewed annually. Good. Because um, in the past, we did just That's what I want kind to of roll sure it over. Thank you. Yep. All good? Very good. Two things. Uh, when's, the, when's the ice rink doing? Ice rink. Have you ordered it? We didn't yet. You didn't order it. We rink. haven't. We did Sarah, we were waiting to get confirmation from a grant that we were trying for, but we're going to have to order it without having the grant because I wanted it in here in December. Yeah. Yep. So she already has it. She has everything ready to go. All she has to do is hit send. What, what, I mean, how much are we talking? Well, if we got the grant, it was we were going to go a little grander because they were going to pay for it. So uh, it's it's a I think it was five thousand was the one that we've got that if we don't get the grant, and basically I'd talked to Tracy and she said if we didn't have it by the end of next week, then we're just clicking the button and ordering it. Um, they were supposed to tell us they said by November, but I keep looking and I've written to them. The state is not answering me back, and they haven't posted the winners and losers. We did unfortunately hear that we didn't get the cops grant. That was the one for the vestibule. Um, they just told us that this week actually, yeah. and even that was late. We were supposed to know that in October. So the state is uh, typical. So we did attend the news conference, Nancy, Tracy, and myself. Next year, it's October 20th to the 22nd. And I think everybody should go. I think it's very informational. You'll go, you can learn a lot, and it's legal for the board to go down and, and go to that. So put it on your calendar. We can make it. It'd be great. If not, I understand. Public comment on the consent agenda items only. All good? Moving on. I need a motion to... I need a motion to approve consent items 4.01 through 7.05. I'll make the motion. You need a second. No, motion by Stacy, second by Kristen. Any uh, conversation about it? No. So there was a couple things. Well, we got, we got a JV boys coach. Did everybody see yep. that? Okay. And there was numbers put to that, uh, some of them stipends that yep. were in there. That was put on there. So I just want to make that clear. So I'll take a vote. Nancy? Yes. Kristen? Yes. Stacy? Yes. Amador? Yes. Yes. Okay, that passed. Old business to come before the board. New business to come before the board. Second public comment. Has anybody got any questions or anything at all for us? Come on, Mrs. Rodick. Mrs. Rodick, <laughs> Rodick, Mrs. Rodick you must have something for us. Look, look, look. <laughs> Don't put her on the spot. I'm kidding with you. <laughs> <laughs> is there any reason for us to go into executive session? I have nothing. I don't believe so. All right. With that being said, our next meeting will be held January 11th at 6 p.m. at the Junior Senior High School. We do not have a meeting in December. There's no need for one. I will take a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. I need a second. Motion by Stacy, second by Kristen. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks for coming. Happy holidays, and we'll see you in January.